We're back here to the special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and the Love Is Podcast. I'm excited to welcome the host of the Love Is Podcast, Kim Sorrell. Kim, how are you? And I'm excited about our guests. I'm doing great, Neil. Thank you. And I am excited about our guests, two incredible individuals. Brian Bao, you have been directing movies for I don't know how long, working with people like Kelsey Grammer and Vanessa Redgraves and Dakota Fanning, and you've done so many cool things. And you're right. So you're very creative. You have a bunch of screenplays that you've written and some stuff underway. And then we have Sean Bosky, who major league baseball player for 15 years. Like who does that? And a pitcher. And hopefully I can't really see, but hopefully you still have a shoulder there, Sean. And, uh, and then decided to do this whole another career with Canyon Productions and and uh, all the stuff that you did for PureFlix to really get it off the ground. And it's such a great platform. And I admire both of you. You both are doing so much. And then now, you, and for a while, you guys are all about in, inspiration, inspiring films, inspiring shows and hope and great quality. And I, and I love that. Welcome, both of you. Welcome to the show. Well, thanks so much. Good to be here. Yeah, yeah. thanks for having us. We appreciate it. Great. I'm really excited about the new series that you have that is coming out, I believe, uh, toward the end of February, County Rescue. It is going to be amazing. I was able to see the first episode. What you guys put Danny through in the first episode is a little incredible. And uh, so I can't imagine what the rest of the season is going to bring. But how, how did it all come about, County Rescue? Well, I'll, I'll start and then hand it over to Brian, because Brian is uh, truly the architect of, um, of the characters, and he sort of builds the world they're in. Um, but I'll just tell you that, uh, that we had inclinations to go after a medical drama, and it, it took a little while to figure out how to do that. And then we needed the right person to really bring it alive. And Brian did a wonderful job that I'll, I'll let him talk about the inspiration for that and how he did it. But, um, you know, audiences love these sort of procedural fun things, whether it's in the courtroom or, uh, you know, crime drama, medical, to see how a team can work together, how these different personalities mesh. And we we personally wanted to see um, a character that had a faith, you know, that it really felt like this character was um, purposeful in their life. And how could um, God be in the story without maybe overtly hitting everybody over the head with, you know, scripture or cringeworthy conversions? And uh, so we asked Brian if he was up for it. And, um, and boy, he did it in a, in a short turnaround, too. So, Brian, I'll hand it over to you and let you explain that. Yeah, we, um, yeah, like I said, Sean, you know, Sean and, and uh, J.D. DeWitt, our other uh, lead producer, uh, came to me with the idea really just to create a medical drama and just feeling that their audience would, you know, really enjoy that as so many people have enjoyed those uh, shows all over TV for years and years. And so, yeah, we really tried to craft it thinking of what we could do uh, that differentiated ourselves from the other ones. You know, I think we wanted to focus a little bit more even on the characters and the relationships between them, uh, knowing that there were so many great, like fantastical uh, giant you know, emergency shows. So we we wanted to lean a little bit less procedural and more into the characters, uh, knowing that that some of the greatest shows on TV were really character based. And so, you know, with that launched off and really wanted to to create a great ensemble, a great team that with all, all being very different. And hopefully you could see that in the first episode all right. at the different personalities coming together uh, to create a world where we would want to keep coming back to and seeing how these different people would all intersect and and influence each other with ultimately the goal to create media that leaves you uh, smiling at the end and feeling a little bit better about the the world and and uh, you know with some themes that could lift people up because it's it's a tough world out there so we want to bring bring a little hope and light and you know when you think about how groundbreaking this is i don't know how many they uh, faith dramas that are out there involving medical and you said how popular it is so you were probably when coming up with this idea as a team saying this is going to work because it's just not really been done yet 
So it's it really opens up again where great American pure flicks and yourselves are really being groundbreaking in this type of a situation. But you're right, characters are what leads people to come back every week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we look at, I just looked it up on the stats that roughly 65% of America, you know, considers themselves to have a faith. And so I just took that statistic and said, oh, well, let's make a lot of the characters because if that's truly our, our country, then a lot of people, uh, you know, organically believe this and we'll just have them work and operate in their lives as if that were the case. And it, oh, ideally, just a very natural way, just like most of the people that we come across in our daily lives. Yeah, I, I love that. And it and it's so true. And it does shine through. Everything that you've talked about really shines through in, in the show itself. You're doing a great job with it. I can't wait to keep watching it, like I said. And uh, the character development um, is so strong right from the very beginning. It's like, Danny, you, you know who she is. Right from the start, you know who she is, you know her heart. And uh, as, the, as the episode went on, you got to know her even more. But um, she's got some challenges. And dealing with that on screen has got to be kind of interesting to do, right? Like the things that she faces. What, what is it like to deal with characters that don't necessarily have everything all put together um, in an easy life? Mm -hmm. uh like some <laughs> <laughs> well i think that's that's what how most people feel right that, that life is hard and so uh, you know you're just trying and and ultimately that's what makes great great entertainment right or challenges and seeing characters face great challenges and try to overcome them and that's what keeps us coming back and having that those questions of like what well, you know will she make it through this and and will he make it through this and will this team uh, make it through these challenges so that's what that's what we love about TV and what keeps us coming back to watch it. So that's what we tried to do here as well. What do you think of the changes, you know, with streaming versus, you know, the days of television where it's an episode every week versus streaming a whole season, depending, like you said, you're releasing, you might be releasing it differently, but the understanding and when people will binge watch this, will do this, does it change the writing in a, a bit? Especially the way when we used to, I used to watch it in the eighties and nineties where, Oh, I can't wait to watch the next episode versus streaming. Uh, you know what? We didn't really uh, know exactly how the network was going to release it. And now it, I believe, Sean, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're, they're going to release an episode a week. So if you're really excited about it, you will have to wait a week. So it will have that more traditional um, and, and certainly on the, uh, the cable network on Great American Family. Uh, for those watching it there, they will have to wait a week between episodes. But I think uh, it doesn't really to me, it didn't really change. I think a hallmark of of tv is that you have cliffhangers that you have something uh inviting you to watch more and and leaving you on a great question each week so that so that you think about it and are curious about it uh while you wait um for the next episode so we we tried to do that as most you know tv does that as well yeah right. well, good job. Neil, oh, i'm sorry kim i was just going to add to that 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 we we all recognize that that viewing habits are changing with streaming platforms and the ability to binge you know mm. you, you know mm. my wife and i have sat there and watched like five episodes of a series you know at night we just can't stop so so that there is a demand for that and our hope is that this first one is it gets enough approval and enthusiasm which i, I really think it will um but you be the judge you guys and your audience will be the judge and if there's enough uh um you know, a clamor for more than then we can expand on it and and hopefully really do full seasons. Um, that That's would great. be a ton of fun. So this this is a big thing for you guys, right? This um, Christian based entertainment, this hope and inspiration, and uh, and things have changed in the industry so much, and it's so good, and it's so nice. And sixty five percent, I think that number is lower than it used to be, but it's still most of America. And so I think it's great that this is out there. But uh, Sean, for you, how did you go from from baseball to wanting to produce Christian television and movies? The short answer is, I think God, God is the author of this. So I didn't set out to be in movies. But what I did care about was uh, um, 
was being involved with something that had a larger social impact, but with an eternal significance to it. So wh whether, you know, some of the things that I choose to be involved with need to have some scale to them, it just really encourages me. And television and movies really do have tons of reach. Uh, we all know that stories impact people's lives. And then the ability to work with great professionals. I, I mean, coming from a professional baseball background, I did not, um, I had no illusions about, I couldn't play a different position. I was specifically a pitcher, so I wasn't going to play center field. Uh, they, they have different gifts and talents and abilities. So you need all these pieces to come together to do something great. Uh, so that's why I have no problem whatsoever partnering with people like Brian, because Brian's really talented. He studied it. He has experience. He has uh, vision and the ability, to, the, the God-given ability to do this really well. So it's fun to watch him do it. And his desire is to see this happen naturally, um, which I also care about. You know, we, we've all seen, you know, movies and television where we go, oh, my goodness, that that doesn't really reflect what <laughs> you know, my experience as a Christian looks like. Uh, so Brian is, um, you know, committed to really trying to make this look uh, authentic. And I, I appreciate that. So what have you learned about the movie business, Sean, and the streaming business by being involved in all these yeah. different things compared to baseball and, you know, understanding the behind the scenes there versus the behind the scenes in this? Yeah, there's things that do apply, of course. The team dynamics apply, and Brian, you know, knows this. As a director, you're responsible for the the chemistry and the culture and the things that are happening, So, so and you depend on everybody to do their job well. So there's lots of things that do apply, and I will say, with that said, that there's lots of bumps and bruises along the road. Uh, film and television is really tricky. Audiences are fickle. Um, I kind of long for the days where you just performed and you, you had statistics and you knew what you did. You didn't leave it up to subjective, you know, <laughs> evaluation. So it's a tough world. <laughs> no kidding, it is. Brian, I'm curious, how is it different? Uh, if, or is it different directing a series as opposed to a movie? Yeah, well, th this uh, this was my first one. So that was really fun to, to go into. Um, I, I had done some as a, you know, some day some short stints on some years ago as a cinematographer, but this was really my first to uh, create and, and ultimately be responsible for the creative side. So, uh, you know what, it's not, it's not all that different. I think the main thing for me as you're, as you're crafting the episodes is that you really have to uh, create more cliffhangers essentially uh, because, you know, people will be, uh, you know, they'll be watching it in smaller chunks when you're going to the movie theater they're they're sort of captive captive and you know they can walk out but they're they're not as apt to you know so you can you can uh have a little bit uh you know you you don't have to kind of keep selling them to keep coming back right because uh so i think that's really the fun challenge of of tv and the great thing about tv is you can leave a lot more open-ended uh yeah. so th it's really fun to have things that you know, in a movie, you feel so much, so much pressure to wrap things up, at least most things, uh, so that the audience feels satisfied. But in TV, it's wonderful. You can just ask, a, have, have an open-ended uh, storyline and be like, well, we won't answer that. We'll wait for next season. Um, so that's really the fun of it. And I think there's a great joy of just simply having more time to go into characters and to hear their stories. And you can deal with a lot more characters and, uh, and, and, uh, you know, just go more in depth to what they're feeling. Whereas traditionally uh, movies are a little bit more plot driven and TV is yeah. more character driven. So absolutely. All right. County rescue premieres Monday, February 26th at 8 PM Eastern and start streaming on great American pure flicks on Friday, February 23rd. We appreciate it guys. Thanks for stopping by. Well, thanks great so much. You You're welcome. All right. You're listening and watching the special simulcast of the Neil Haley show and love his podcast guys. Take care.